Hey, welcome to our lecture online, and now we're going to take a look at something that may be challenging unless you know what to do with it, angles that are greater than 360 degrees. What do you do with those? Well, let's say we have an angle of 390 degrees. Well, we always start from the x-axis. We travel in a counterclockwise direction, and so 390 degrees means we keep going, we keep going, we keep going until we reach an angle of 360. That's still not quite there. We keep going, 360, 370, 380, 390, and there it is. So that is an angle of 390 degrees. But that doesn't mean much. What we can see is that we end up back in a place as if we had an angle of 30 degrees. So we could say that theta is equal to 390 degrees, which is equal to 30 degrees. It's the same angle. It'll give you the same xy value where the, hy where the hypotenuse hits the, um, the unit circle. And so what we can do then is, to find an angle that falls between 0 and 360 degrees, we simply subtract, this is equal to 390 degrees minus 360 degrees, until we get something between 0 and 360. So we can see here that an angle of 390 degrees really is the same thing as an angle of 30 degrees. What about an angle of 420 degrees? Well, we can go all the way around. All the way around is 360, and then we go another, let's say, another 60 degrees like so. So if we go all the way around like that, around, and we come back around like that, so we can see that going around that's 360 plus another 60 is 420, which means that the angle of 420 degrees is exactly the same as an angle of 60 degrees, and of course we can see that by simply subtracting 360 degrees from that, and we'll get 60 degrees, and so therefore all what we need to do is take the angle that's bigger than 360, subtract 360 from it, and we get to an angle between 0 and 360, which is a lot easier to work with. How about an angle of 720? Well, 720 is exactly twice 360. It's like going around the unit circle two times until you get back to the x-axis, which means that 720 is the same as 0 degrees, because this is equal to uh, 720 degrees minus 360 degrees, which is equal to 360 degrees, which is equal to 360 degrees minus 360 degrees, which is equal to 0 degrees. So whenever you add or subtract 360 degrees, you get exactly the same angle, in a way, effectively, because you get exactly the same xy value wherever the hypotenuse hits the unit circle. How about 840? Well, we subtract from that 360 degrees, and we get 360 subtract from that would be 480. And that's still bigger than 360, so subtract another 360 away from that, and that gives us 120 degrees. So there we go, that's the number between 0 and 360. So 840 degree angle is the same as a 120 degree angle. Notice that it's only 120 degree bigger than 720. 720 is already the same as 0, so add 120 to 0, you get 120, or you get 840. It's the same thing. How about when we have the angle in terms of radians rather than degrees? Well, again, anytime you go around the circle, that's equal to 2 pi. So we subtract 2 pi from that, minus 2 pi. We get equal to pi. With other words, an angle of 3 pi is the same as an angle of pi. An angle of pi is 180 degrees. That brings you right over to this side right there. And finally, when you have something like 17 over 4 pi, how do you reduce that? How do you simplify that? Well, this can be written as 4 and a quarter pi because 4 goes on 17 4 times and a remainder 1. And so this can be written as uh, 4 and a quarter pi minus 4 pi. It's a multiple of 2 pi, which gives you a quarter pi. And so you can say that 17 fourths pi is the same as 1 quarter pi. A quarter pi would give you 45 degrees. Again, if you go around 4 times and then a quarter time, Oh, I'll take that back. 4 pi is not going around the circle four times, it's going around the circle twice, because for each time or turn around the circle, it's equal to 2 pi of an angle. So 2 pi, another 2 pi gives you 4 pi, and a quarter pi gives you another 45 degrees. So you can see that 17 over 4 pi is the same as 1 quarter pi, which is the same as 45 degrees. So that's what you do when you are given an angle that is greater than 360 degrees or an angle that is greater than 2 pi 
just go ahead and keep subtracting 360 degrees from it until you end up in an angle between 0 and 360, or keep subtracting 2 pi from it until you get an angle between 0 and 2 pi, and then you can work with it. And that's what we do with those large angles.